All right, hello there. Um, so what we'll do right now in this video is uh, something that I wish we had had more time in class to do, but really I want to spend some time just really looking at an example of a parameterized surface. Um, I've drawn something on the page right here, and this is for people who maybe they still are a little unsure about what's going on when I draw this square, this square picture down that you're seeing at lower left, which is the portion, which is my parameter domain. I'll call it my parameter domain. And the 3D picture that we see on the upper right. So um, I've, kind of been, I've kind of been rushing through details, but here we'll have some time to analyze um, what I really mean by this, by this um, dual picture. So we'll work with a kind of a relatively simple example, which is the one I have written up here. I have a parameterization drawn for you. So I've told you my x of uv, my sine of u, oh, sorry, my x of uv, my y of uv, and my z of uv. And additionally, I've told you the limits of my parameter. So what I'm boxing right now, or I can even highlight it, is this is, this is where, um, these are the u and v values that I'm allowed to stick in. And you can see that highlighted down here. So, um, my parameter domain it has a u-axis and a v-axis, <clears throat> and my according to up here, my u my allowed u values range from zero to two pi, as you see there and there, and you see my v is ranging from zero to two up here. And I claim right here in this writing, I, I'm claiming that the surface that we'll get at the end of the day is a vertical cylinder of a certain radius. <clears throat> so radius one and above z equals zero, below z equals two. And I say the side because I'm not including like the edges of the can, if you think of it as a can of beans or something, not including those top and bottom flat circles. And it's okay if you don't believe this. Um, the whole goal of this video will be to understand the picture and understand really how we're building the surface out of this R, out of this parameterization. So how we'll do it is, Really, this is something that I should have done more in, a little bit more in class, but I have a, a, a couple of points at the bottom, and um, we can see if I feed them into the parameterization what I'll get. So I'll do a couple of these, and I won't have to plug in all of them, but you'll see the pattern. So let's start. Let's just see what we get when we plug in that green point, that bright grass green point, into my parameterization R. So the first point we'll see is that um, let's let's see what let's see how the parameterization vomits out that green point. So I really have to plug it in. I'm looking at R of, and that light green point is zero zero. So to figure out what that is, I've just got to plug it into my parameterization. So I'm looking at cosine of zero, sine of zero, and zero. So it's, figure out what that is. Well, the only, I see the two left pieces, the two right pieces are zero, and cosine of zero is one. <clears throat> okay, so that's telling me when I fed in that zero, zero point, the point that, got, that gets spit out is this thing right here. So let me find in my x, y, z space where that is. Well, that's x is one, all the rest are zero. So that point goes right here. Okay. I'm gonna minimize, well, I'll minimize that later. Let's, let's do this more uh, dark grass green. So maybe evergreen green. R of, well, let's look at the coordinates. U comma V down here, my U has now bumped up to pi the halves. That's pi halves and my V is still zero. So let's see the, what we get. If I stick everything in, well, now I'm looking at cosine of pi halves. We know that to be zero. We're looking at sine of pi halves. We know that to be one. And we're still looking at zero for the z component. So this tells us zero, one, zero. That is where the parameterization coughs out this, uh, uh, that, that point down there. So it maps, it goes to zero, one, zero. And I can map that right here process will continue. So let's look at that night blue. Let's see where that where that buddy goes to. So we're now we're plugging in our 
our u value has bumped up to a full pi and our v coordinate we're still on that horizontal line down there we're still on this line <clears throat> so our v coordinate is zero and i'm just gonna plug everything on in one more time so we got cosine of pi sine of pi and zero you remember what this is we've got negative one zero zero maybe you're starting to see a pattern i hope so if not that's all right so i'm going to plot this and so what what we, this computation just tells us is if i stick in that point um the parameterization spits out this point in 3d space so that's really what this arrow says it's like an in and an out you put in that blue you get out that blue that's okay and so the finally let's do this nice pretty sky blue at three pi at three pi that should be three pi fourths or three pi halves oops all right so let's do the last point let's look at r of three pi halves comma zero because we're still on that zero curve okay and we've got this is well i'm i'm going to skip the details and you can check this is zero negative one zero that's this point right here and that's going to take me right on here okay let's plug in some more points let's plug in some of those uh warmer colors what i'm gonna do i'm not gonna throw this stuff away but i'm gonna i'm gonna resize it so it's right there <laughs> don't want to throw it away it's good it's good math all right let's look at this this really sweet um peach color Okay, let's look at that. Well, that now has v coordinate equal to one. So we're going to be looking now at r of, well, the u coordinate is zero. So zero comma one, we're going to plug all that in. We're going to get a cosine of zero, sine of zero, and now our v is one. So let's see what happens. We're going to get one comma zero comma one. So really the only thing that's changing is now our height is bumped up by one. This is what's different than that grass green from our last time. So let's plot that. It's going to be just one unit above the green. All the other coordinates, oops, uh, it, it agrees with the x and y of the light green. So I just need to bump it up by one. So I really think that's like distance one right there. All right. And I hope you can start to see where the rest of this is going to go. So <clears throat> I'm going to skip some of the details. Now, this melon color is pi halves comma one. And I hope you can believe that that will go to zero, one, one. Really, it's just the thing that's sitting over the forest screen by a, that right there. OK, and I'm, at this point, I hope you can see that the red will fall a unit above the blue. So. Uh, We've got here, I'm plotting that point, and ooh, I haven't decided what's the next color. How about this lovely violet? That will hover over this uh, sky blue. And so I didn't do the computations for the red and the purple, but if you, you could just plug it in and it would be very similar. You would get here, you would plug, uh, I'll make it red, just be visually appealing. This, I promise you plug it in, you'll get um, negative one comma zero comma one. And I promise you plug in that, that purple, I promise what you'll get is zero negative one, one, I swear. And so let's do a last set of colors. Let's do like a light gray. Then a, the, the light gray is gonna be one unit above the peach, the, the pink. So now we're right here. I'm gonna darken my gray to get, I guess this one. And that's gonna be one unit above the, the melon color. I promise, I promise if you plugged in those actual values, so I mean, what would you plug in to get that darker gray? You'd be plugging in pi halves comma two into the R and you'd get that vertical piece. And let's make this last one black or these last two will make black. Okay, so there, and there we go. So you're kind of starting to see maybe these points do fall on the edge of a cylinder. Okay, 
Okay, so I've plotted points. I'm going to amp it up. All right, I'm going to, in the next page, I'm actually going to restrict down here, not to individual points, but I'm going to restrict to individual curves. So let me show you what I mean. So instead now, let me draw the same UV plane. We're going zero to two pi. We're going zero to two. And let's see what happens along, what's the good color? Let's do purple. Okay. Okay. So let's do this color. So on that purple line, so on the purple line in the parameter domain, what do I have? What I, well, I have V is zero and U ranges between zero and two pi. Here's zero, here's up here at two pi, and they're all at constant elevation zero. So let's see how R spits out that curve because it's you know a curve of a one dimensional curve is going to move to a one dimensional curve in x y z space all right so um i want to erase that thing down there okay so we will be drawing something in x y z space and let's actually go back to that parameterization so the parameterization um well, I'll write it down here. It was R of U V equals cosine U sine U V. That was what the thing we're plugging in every into every time. That's the money. That's what we're sticking to. So if I plug in that set of bounds into my parameter, I'm looking at R of U zero equals uh well I got cosine of U sine of u, zero. And now, don't let that u scare you. Um, if that were a t, I know you know what that is. If that were a t, you'd say that's a unit circle going around counterclockwise in the z equals zero plane. Um, so there's nothing different with u's and v's, with u's and t's. So I can actually draw that picture in here. So we're looking at this unit circle. And I'm going to try to remember that colors, the color scheme that we used. So this point was this point. Um, the dark green was this dark green. Then we bumped up to night blue. And then the last thing we had was the baby blue. All right. That's, that's just trying to relive the picture from last time. So you're seeing, going back and forth, you're seeing that that purple ring on the bottom is connecting the dots. Let's do, let's kind of do two more. So this horizontal line, um, okay, so now the red line in the UV plane is similar. It's it's not v equals zero, so I'm, I'm comparing and contrasting what I had right here. So that red line is a line where u is starting off at zero. It's ranging up to two pi. So I'm going to write that. So zero is less than or equal to u. u is ranging up till two pi. And along that red line, what do I have? This constant v equals one. So let's plug this data, just like we did, back into the parameter, into the big R. So I'm looking at R, U is ranging, um, V is fixed at one, what will I get? It's cosine of U, sine of U, one. Again, if you really like T's, this is just cosine of T, sine of T, constant one. I'm gonna erase it because I mean, we don't need it. I'm changing T's for U's, it doesn't matter so much. This describes a unit circle um, centered along the z-axis going counterclockwise, radius one, and it has height constant one. So what do we have? I'll draw, this is z equals one, and the picture we have is just shift that purple circle up one. So we're getting this. You're starting to see the cylinder. And I've, I've drawn the arrows because I want to show, you know, I, we know as we inc increase like a T parameter, we move counterclockwise. So that's how I know 
That's one way that I know that this red circle is going to be moving in a counterclockwise fashion. I mean, another way, we, if you can go back to what we had before, I mean, really it was as we did light pink, melon, red, purple, we, we got light pink, melon, red, purple. So that was a counterclockwise motion. So that's, that's another way you can convince yourself of the directionality that you're moving. And I won't bore you because I'm sure at this point, I hope at this point you can see that this horizontal line up here is going to be again, a unit circle up here. And you can get that because red, uh, purple, uh, orange line, orange line in UV plane becomes R of u comma two, because now the height is up here at two, <clears throat> uh, equals cosine of u, sine of u, comma two. And that's just, again, a unit circle moving counterclockwise of radius one situated up there at height two. Okay, so let's do some of the, let's do a couple of the other kinds of lines in the UV plane. I'm going to minimize this, okay, make that go away. don't want to resize that puppy. Yes, okay, that's pretty as a small thing. All right, so let's do a vertical line. Let us do, well, I like blue. So let's start this line, make it thick, all right. So now the blue line, in parameter domain is, okay, now this time my U is fixed and my V ranges from zero to two. Because right, look at this blue segment, I'm stuck at my, my U is constant and my lowest V is zero, my highest V is two. So my V goes between zero and two and my theta, my not theta, well it's kind of theta, but my U is fixed dead zero. So I'm going to plug this into my parameterization. So I'm going to plug this data into my R. So my wherever I write a U, it's going to be fixed at zero, and I'm going to let that V range from zero to two. Well, if I plug this stuff in, I'll get cosine of zero, sine of zero, V. Simplifying that, that's one comma zero comma V. If you really, if you really want to go further, I'm going to separate this as we've done in the past because this describes a vertical line segment. You can do it a base, a base point times a velocity vector. So I'm going to do one zero zero plus v times one zero zero, and v is ranging from zero to two. So it's really, um, if I draw this segment, forget I have all that junk there. If this were a t, you would definitely tell me this parameterizes a line segment beginning at 100 zero, zero, green point and it moves precisely vertically upward so all right oh i should have done that in blue shouldn't i have yes blue. okay all right so that's that segment and now you're i hope you're really seeing the pieces of the cylinder come together so without actually doing this computation three more times i'll just tell you all right this green segment will go where in the back okay it's going to overlap a little bit i don't want it to overlap you can kind of see the difference i hope my picture isn't perfect but i hope it's good enough all right then we've got uh this one coming up over here and then we have what's a really nice color this lemon is pretty so we're gonna do this okay so you can kind of see how how um, curves, line, these line segments in the parameter domain correspond to um, circles and lines in, in 3D space in 3D. So the idea is any picture down here has a corresponding picture up here. <clears throat> and now we can kind of have some fun. So let me, this last thing, this last thing, we'll, we're going to abandon this altogether because now we have a pretty solid understanding about how points in here move to points up in the, up in the cylinder. You're seeing that cylinder is this thing. Okay. 
let's draw one last thing. Let's see. Uh, this is kind of fun. So let me draw. How did we cut this up? We had like one, two, three, four. And this corresponded to X, Y, Z. And it's like the eight parts of this cylinder. Ah, whack. All right. <clears throat> and let me kind of show you. I hope this is illustrative. Okay, okay. I am going to call, let's see, let's see. Hmm. This lemon box corresponds to this lemon box. You can kind of convince yourself from the previous page that by that's where the, this lemon, the red, the green, ooh. this picture I drew over here was wrong. Oops, sorry about that. Because this should be theta equals zero, that vertical blue. This is theta equals two pi, or pi halves. This is pi. This is three pi halves. And so this better wind back up to two pi. Okay. So <clears throat> um, if I write, if I write the, let's, let's see. What the parameter tradition sort of does is it takes this, this um, rectangle and it wraps it around. So if I drew an orange one right here, that would look like one over here. If I drew a two right here, okay, this is gonna be really tough. Mm, I should have practiced this before I did everything. So, okay, that is going to be this over here. So it's gonna be a reverse two. It's gonna be something, uh, something like this. All right, then a three right here would look something like a three. And a four right here is the easiest one to draw, four right there. Is that right? Does this make sense? Yes, that should make sense. I think. Yes, that makes sense. Okay, let me try, let me try it again below. So let's do, let's do beneath a four, I'll have eight. So that might show up as an eight right here. I really should have practiced this, sorry. But now this is, the seven will look something like this. Now this, the, the backside gets really tricky. So just bear with me. That six will look like a, reversed six on the other side and the what's the last color let's do black is a six seven five okay can i do a backwards five and it's going to be on that last one so that backwards five kind of looks like a no something like that okay well and the main idea is that any picture that you have in this uv plane so if I drew some star up here, it would look like a star up here. And points correspond to points. Points always correspond to points. Lines correspond to lines. And the parameter, the, the parameterization is always your best friend in terms of going from the base, from the parameter domain to the surface itself. Um, so I hope that that helped. And um, yeah, all right, good luck parameterizing.